what is going on everyone James with their best layers here in the backyard once again and today I got this guy finished up this is the 50th bait handmade bait that I've ever made and uh, did a little bit of acrylic painting on this guy did some more airbrushing on it Yeah, so what we're doing here in this process is I molded and made a bunch of fins for this bait. And this is the first time I've done this, the first time I've attempted putting something like this in. And uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, looking up stuff, that my best bet here is to just super glue them in because that's what everyone says on the pages that I follow. Now with this guy here, finish this dragonfly, got these weird crazy eyes that I made. I don't know what I was thinking when I made those eyes, but they kind of cool, kind of weird. I don't know if I like them or not. But uh, this guy needs its wings also. It's all clear coated, epoxy, epoxy coated I should say. And uh, basically ready to get its wings. Now I'm not going to use super glue on these. I'm going to use a little dab of two ton epoxy and push that down in there with the epoxy in there. And what that does is the epoxy comes up over the top of this and it will seal all that in because these little rings will wear out in the long run and bust. So if you <clears throat> If you do it that way, in my head, in my thinking, I guess I should say, um, it's going to fit better into the hole, and the epoxy will go over the ends of those little cuffs, and it will hold the whole thing as one piece in there. If you use the super glue <clears throat> on these skirts, the super glue has a tendency to run back out or run down this, and all these little appendages you have in your skirt here will all stick together. I've had that happen before. <clears throat> it is not any fun. So, what we're going to do here. <clears throat> Let's see. Camera on. Yeah, I think I'll just leave it right there. I'm going to be super gluing all of these pieces in. And this should be a pretty simple and easy process. I just got some regular old super glue don't want to use the gel for this you want to use the regular super glue for this so we're going to start i want to start with this back one just going to put a little bit on the sides all the walls and on the bottom get a mountain there make sure the tail is well not tail but the fin make sure the fin is the right way I'm just going to hold that in there for a second. A couple seconds. <coughs> really smoky out here. Still, we've got record fires going on in California right now. It's really, really horrible. I guess it's affecting a lot of fisheries and a lot of fish are dying. Uh, I've seen a bunch of uh, footage online of... Uh, like giant shad die-offs and stuff at some of the lakes around in California kind of really sucks and what I'm doing here as I'm doing this I'm kind of looking at the super glue because it's wet when you put it on and it starts drying see it's not quite wanting to stick right oh yeah it is I just gotta wait for that to dry so I'm kind of holding it and then I could have cut that slot on the bottom a little better in the future if I'm gonna make something like this to a uh, mold or something I'll probably take more time to do it the proper way and so also with this tail here I gotta drill a hole on this so I may do that also and these fins you just you know take time glue one at a time in and I'm gonna let that one dry for a second <clears throat> and then move on to the next one. Alright, so I attempted to put super glue in there and put the fin in. 
And the super glue does not like to stick to the fin. Um, well, this is trial and error here, so uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do like I'm going to do on this guy. I'm just going to mix up, mix up some two ton epoxy real quick. So I'm going to run inside the house. I'm going to grab some epoxy and I'm going to put in these bottom fins and one of these because you got to do one at a time. We'll do that real quick and show you guys. Yeah, all right, this is all trial and error here. So I originally tried the super glue. Super glue didn't work because my holes are just, they're too big. I cut them too wide and uh, I need to work on making my slots a lot cleaner. So what I did, with the back fin here, and this fin, was I tried to two, two tiny epoxy them in. This, like I said, it's all trial and error here. And the epoxy set, and when I went to try to pull on the appendage, it just pulled completely out. So what it did is it actually left a perfect slot for the uh, piece of plastic to go right back in there. And now that it fits in there completely perfect, I threw the super glue on it. And now, because it's tight in there, it holds really good. I mean, really good. These things are in there. I don't want to yank on them and rip them or nothing, but I mean, they're in there now. So now what I got to do with this guy, same thing, is I got to put a little tiny bit of two tiny epoxy in there, stick this guy in there, and let it set up. Once it's set up, then I can pull this out and I can super glue it in. It'll make that just a little bit tighter and it lets the super glue actually have something to grip on the sides. Uh, all right, so that is that with this guy. And I'm going to do that here in a second. Show you guys the final product. It's going to take me a second to uh, mix up some stuff. And I got to set each one of these at like an angle about like that to where it's perfectly sitting straight. And I got to continuously come out and check and make sure that the appendage is sitting right and that it will sit straight in the uh, in the little slot that one's it's not quite perfect but that's all right this is the first time I've ever tried to go this detailed with stuff on a bait and I got that tail put in there put a little bit of super glue drilled my holes like I do I always do a bigger and a smaller I start out with a small drill bit, <clears throat> I drill all the way through, both of them, and I come back with the bigger one, and I only hit one part with the big, and the opposite with the big, that way when you stick the toothpick through, it'll be nice and tight on the other side, <clears throat> and it won't push all the way through, it keeps the toothpick from sliding, and then I just put a little tiny dab of super glue on the backs of those to hold them in there, and it kind of seals the wood, and it seals all this. So it's nice and uh, nice and good. I mean, overall, so far this bait looks pretty good. I mean, we're gonna go see how it swims once I'm completely finished with it. Now we're gonna move on to some other stuff here. Um, I just got some stuff came in the mail, and I got these guys in the mail a second ago, <coughs> which I ordered from Etsy. Go on uh, Etsy, and you can find different people that make the Cabo Shan glass eyes. And uh, somebody is wanting this bait. It's exactly the same paint job as another bait that I did that I sold. Those eyes just make that thing uh, pop, man. Those big eyes. I don't know what it is about the big eyes. A lot of people like the big eyed baits like that, and uh, they're just, they just look cool. I don't know. Something appealing about them. I think the uh, the fishermen like the eyes more than the fish do. But I mean, if the baits still catch fish. Chicken wings for sale. This guy's for sale. This little dude is for sale. Finished up the dragon, the second dragonfly. Put the bill, the uh, jitterbug bill on that guy. And I toss some uh, some hooks with a little bit of flare on the sides. I actually took these hooks off a different bait that I made, just because they were already wrapped. Not the best wrap job in the world, but. Just a little bit of extra on that bait. That guy's kind of cool looking. I got these two dudes that I drew up. I drew this one up last night. I was just messing around. Just 
the, I don't know, I may end up trying to carve something like that. I just like making different stuff. And uh, something else that we are doing here, Richard left me all of his spinnerbait stuff. And some of these are ones that he made for me. And uh, I just kind of switched some of the blades around. Each one of these has different blades. This has two big willow leaves. This has one big willow leaf and a small Colorado. And then this one's got a big willow and a small willow. Each one's kind of different. And what I do on these spinner baits is I take little mini zip ties and I put them on there because those collars that you put on, the little rubber collars, they actually break. And these guys were just sitting out in my bait room in the heat and all of the collars busted on these and all of the skirts came off and they were all over on the desk out there in my bait room. So I took them all apart and I refixed these up yesterday. And then this also, I was looking through the box of stuff and uh, Richard had already made a buzz bait, but it didn't have the blade on it. Didn't have the buzz blade. So I had an old buzz bait that had a beat out hook and it was completely done. And so I just took the components and I made uh, the first Urban Bass Slayers buzz bait. So we got some Urban Bass Slayers spinner baits and I have all the molds and I have a bunch of the powders. I've got a ton of the skirts. Um, I may try to do this. I know this was Richard's thing, but I mean, it can't be that hard to pour lead and uh, powder coat these things and stick them in the oven and get them right. I mean, it just takes a little bit of time to learn this stuff and get better at it. So I'm going to be possibly getting into making spinner baits, buzz baits. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of making these as personal use stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And something else that just came in the mail was these guys which I just got more pearl ice silver a big old beer bottle of it because I use a lot of that on the baits some more pearlized lime which I use a lot of and then these colors I've never used before and I thought they were pretty cool looking I got the pearlized orange it's actually pearl tangerine that'll be for the bellies of baits and I got this iridescent magenta uh, excuse me fuchsia uh, iridescent fuchsia and I just think that stuff looks cool it looks kind of metallic looking I already have a bunch of colors like that but not the metallic and then I found this stuff this is just I thought this was really cool looking because it's got the blue tints with the gold in it I think that would be cool on some of the the baits like this to put just a little bit of that blue like right here for the bluegill uh patterned baits stuff like that just that little bit of that blue with the gold you really got to mix this up man that stuff's all settled to the bottom so yeah, it's, it's a cool color, man. What is it called again? Wicked Fastback Green. Pretty cool color. And uh, I wanted to do a little shout out to uh, Spray Gunner and Ken. It says, if you think I did a good job, please mention my name and your feedback. Well, Ken, you guys are awesome. I just ordered these paints a couple days ago and they got here really quick. And thank you, Jacob, for uh, making sure that everything was right in the order and it is. And I get all of my airbrush paints I either get the basic colors at Hobby Lobby and I get the rare stuff that you can not find at Hobby Lobby, like all of these awesome and amazing colors on uh, spraygunner.com. So go to Spray Gunner. They have Japanese airbrush paints that I get too. They have um, Tamiya color, which it is called. And then they have all the different Createx lines. They have a bunch of other stuff and they're really awesome. Uh, they never never messed up an order on me and it's always good quality paint that you can't find anywhere else like I was saying and yeah, there you go pretty cool so we are going to get to molding this fan <clears throat> and then gluing them in it's taken a while to do this I was hoping to have this bait completely finished by the end of this video but I didn't get to it I may try now I painted I hand painted these fins which they came out pretty good it just doesn't kick with the uh the other fins so anyways i think i'm going to uh get to finishing some of these baits get to airbrushing some stuff and finishing a bunch of this up um what else is on the agenda here oh i wanted to mention something real quick we had a subscriber or subscribers that uh 
actually paid money for us, me and Devin, to go out on a uh, guided trip at Clear Lake with uh, Paul Bailey, of all people. So we're going to be able to go out. We set a date for November 12th, which is right around Thanksgiving. And uh, we are going to be out on a boat on Clear Lake with Paul Bailey in the middle of winter during big fish season on his spot. And we get five hours on the boat. And one of our subscribers paid for me and Devin. I guess it was uh, the way Paul said it. It was a thank you to uh, us for just putting out all of our videos and helping everybody else in the Sacramento area and all around just have fishing spots and places to fish. Um, it kind of it was kind of shocking. I actually kind of brought a tear to my eye, and I was I was kind of getting down on this whole urban bachelor thing. I was I was starting to lose a little bit of faith, and then uh, I get that message, and oh boy, did that light a fire underneath me and Devin? Because uh, we were really trying hard to uh, get out there on the water with either Tactical Bassin, who has now moved, or Paul Bailey, or even. Um, we want to go out with Bass Union also. He's a really cool dude. If you guys don't watch Bass Union, go check out his page. He makes a bunch of handmade stuff also. And, man, just... I don't know. It just worked out. It just worked out somehow. And we got that message, and we are going to be going out with Paul Bailey. Prime time. My my personal best is an 8, and Devin's is an 11. Who knows? We, we, may, we may end up beating our personal best. Well, anyways, guys, I got a little sidetrack there, so I'm going to get to putting some epoxy in these holes and making them a little tighter, popping those guys out, hitting them with the super glue, getting this guy finished up. really want to get out and test some of these baits. Um, if you guys want some center baits or some bug baits, I can possibly make those for you in the future. I got all kinds of different colored skirts in there, red ones and blues and yellows and whites. Um whatever man I mean these guys too these are all for sale pick any kind of bait you want basically just about any color bait you want do some color matching and try to get the eyes the same colors as the bait I like to mess around sometimes I made these, these eyes kind of wild looking Got the skirts. They're dry now. These things ain't coming out. Got the skirts in. These guys are for sale. We mess around and draw some more stuff up. Got all kinds of things going on. It's finally getting cooler here in Sacramento, and I can finally get my bait room back together. I've been in there messing around with some stuff and trying to clean it up. I'm gonna take out a ton of stuff that I have made and just stuff that's sitting around and I'm going to toss a lot of stuff out and I'm going to give a whole bunch of stuff away so as this year comes to a close we're going to do more giveaways and getting really close to getting monetized um, really really close super duper close so I think uh, if we do go out with Paul Bailey and do a video out there and he said he's going to film also when he takes us out on Clear Lake so Paul Bailey's going to film for his channel and we're going to film for ours. And I don't know, man. If we do some big things out there, just might just might get monetized off of that alone. Just uh, sending us up over the edge of where we need to go. Got to keep your head in the right place and keep chugging along, man. Sometimes you'll get down on life. You feel like you're just spinning your wheels. And in reality, you're just you're not spinning your wheels you're you're making things and you're making progress and sometimes it doesn't seem like it but just keep chugging along and keep doing what you need to do to get where you need to go anyways urban bass layers thanks for watching everyone um i think i'm going to try to get my kids out this evening and go fish one of these small fishing spots that i know of and just go try to get my uh kids on some fish Anyways, guys, thanks for stopping by. Like, subscribe, and share. Tell your friends about us. You guys hook up. Uh, how can I say this? If you guys are, like, uh, telling other people about us, like, uh, 
there's a guy that follows me and uh, he's on Instagram and stuff and he always is getting other people to buy me stuff so I've been sending him some free stuff and I'm about to send him some other baits just for getting me customers and pretty cool stuff man so go check out Bass Aggressive on uh, Instagram and then uh, also we got a subscriber that started a page um, and his name is Kurt Hetrich go uh, check him out also and Kurt I, I boxed up some stuff for you and I sent you out a bunch of uh, plastics and a glide bait for you to fish with and do a review on your page with thank you for that and uh, anyways I'm mumbling on here uh, if you guys want to fish my lures and you guys got a YouTube page Hit me up, man, and uh, I'll I'll send you out some stuff so you can so you can fish it. And I just want people to be able to fish my lures and tell me what they think of them, so I can make advancements and make my stuff better, and hopefully help somebody catch the biggest fish of their life with one of my handmade baits. That'd be really awesome. Anyways, you guys have a good day. Thanks for following. Like, subscribe, share, all that funny business as I said a second ago, and have a good day, Urban Bass Layers. Alright everyone, so here is the uh, finished product. That's a little shad bait that I did. Pretty cool. I think it came out pretty good. I just gotta throw some hooks on this guy. And go see how it swims. I know it sits pretty good in the water. Just get to go see how it swims. Anyways, Red Bass Layers, thanks for watching, guys.